Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have a Crazy Current Events video for you guys. I'm happy to announce that I am restarting the Crazy Current Events series. I know I haven't done one in some time and I do apologize for that. I've just been busy with just updates on GTA and Red Dead and a few other topics. But basically the Crazy Current Events series for people that are unfamiliar with this, this is a series that I, I did in the past in which I cover ridiculous, you know, stories that I find and I just kind of rant about them and I talk about, you know, how I think they're stupid and what's going on. And basically here, you know, I just started searching up like, you know, news articles the other day regarding video games and I found two news articles, you know, within the same week on just complaining about violent video games and both of these articles are suggesting that kids that actually play violent video games are somehow going to become criminals or going to become violent. I'm not joking on this and one of these reports actually even suggests that playing Fortnite is somehow going to encourage kids to become violent. I'm not joking. Let's take take a look at the clip right here. The type of video games your kids play can impact, impact who they become down the road. Several studies have shown violent games can impact children, making them immune or numb to violence and exhibit more aggressive behavior. Children under the age of 12 tend to be the most vulnerable age group and roughly 90% of video games containing some element of violence, children are exposed to more real word, real word slander when they play online. Kids that are playing these um, first person shooter online things they're they're interacting with real people and, and I think that's the big difference right there is because then there's a lot of cuss words racial slurs etc cetera, etc cetera, because again you're you're behind a, a computer or, or a video game screen Dr. Zachary Keller says video games can be a great coping skill to an extent but parents should monitor children's screen time what the hell? And and they were they were showing different game they were showing gameplay I think of um correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't recognize all the games in there. There was some racing game in there which it, a racing game has no violence in it in the first place which, you know, the only the only racing game that I can really think of that actually had some violence in it was Burnout, but that was mostly like car crashes. You know, GTA is not even really a racing game, but it does have racing in it, but this looks like a strictly a racing game. Then the other game that they're showing here is they're showing actually this this correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is actually Minecraft, right? That's Minecraft. And so Minecraft, you're literally doing a story on violent video games and you're throwing Minecraft in there, which Minecraft is like, you know, basically pixelated game where you build stuff. You know, it's like one of the least violent games ever. You know, the, the most violence that you have in, my, in in Minecraft is just, you know, hit somebody occasionally, you hit a figure. That's it. There's like, it, 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 there's like almost no violence in Minecraft. It's, it's all pixelated. And then they're showing gameplay of Fortnite. Come on, seriously? Fortnite? Really? This is this is what they're gonna this is that look and, and as you guys know on this channel I'm not a fan of Fortnite. I don't like these battle royale games But I don't think that these battle royale games are somehow causing kids to become criminals or become violent The reason I don't like these battle royale games because I just don't don't like them I'm just not into them. I'm just not into battle royale But I don't think that Fortnite is gonna cause people cause kids to become criminals or be violent And then the the, the other one here. I think this is counter-strike that they're actually showing I'm surprised I'm actually surprised they didn't show Call of Duty in here. That's all the media almost always complains about is Call of Duty. But literally, read through this article. The type of video games kids play can, can impact on who they become. Multiple sources have shown violent games can impact children by making them immune or numb to violence. What? Immune or numb to violence? What? So th this, this article is suggesting that kids playing games like Minecraft and like, and Minecraft and Fortnite and racing games and Counter-Strike is somehow going to turn kids into psychopaths? Seriously? I have played so many violent games. I've played violent games even since I had the PlayStation 1, you know? Uh, I've played violent games even since I was like, you know, six, seven years old. And I never turned out violent. I have never been in a fight in my life. I have never wanted to hurt anybody. So this 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 idea that somehow kids are playing these games that they're going to uh, they're going to become violent is just ridiculous. Parents should explain to their kids the difference between violence in fictional in a video game and in real life. That's it. You know, it's it's all on the parents how their kids turn out. It has nothing to do with the video games. 
kids that are playing these first person shooter online uh, online things they're interacting with real people and i think that's the big difference um uh, right there because there's a lot of cuss words racial slurs etc because again you're behind a computer or a video game screen said dr zachary keller a psychiatrist with chi health well of course that's why you know a lot of video game companies even e-rated games claim that the that the interactions might change when you play online of course you know you're gonna have people that are gonna curse you're gonna have people that are gonna say dumb things online it's the internet it is the internet people say dumb things online people people also say dumb things in public but just know when you're playing an online game of course you're gonna encounter toxic people that's gonna happen and if parents don't want their kids in engaging with these toxic people they shouldn't let them play these online games that have toxic people in the first place and most of these games that have toxic people in them are rated m in the first place so i don't understand you know the whole reasoning here yes you know when you play online i will concede that you can encounter toxic people but it's making it seem like this article is making it seem like if you play online and you encounter somebody that's cursing at you, that somehow you're going to become more violent or you're going to start cursing at people and learning curse words. You know, I, I, I just don't buy this personally. With more than half of all video games rated by the Electronic Software Rating Board containing some form of violence, youth are at a huge risk of being exposed to real-world slander when they play online. And that's why I, I say that parents should teach their kids the difference between a video game and real life. And also parents should know that when their kids play these games, when they play these online games, that they can encounter toxic people. You know, the first online game that I've ever really played is I played these SOCOM games. Those are really the first online games that I played on the PS2. I was around 12 years old when I started playing, I started playing SOCOM 3 and SOCOM Combined Assault multiplayer on my PS2. And when I played SOCOM, uh, multiplayer. I had, I encountered people that cursed, you know, I was 12 years old, but you know, I, even then, you know, I didn't really get that offended by it. I just ignored it. I just said, you know, what a bunch of idiots. I was just trying to play the game, trying to play with my squad, having fun. And I just ignored the dumb people. That's just it. But you know, this of course, like I said, you're going to encounter toxic people online, but they're making it seem, they're making it seem like every single person that you encounter online is toxic. Even on a game like GTA, GTA Online and even Call of Duty. And Call of Duty and GTA Online are known for having a lot of toxic players. Even on those games, you have, most people on those games are chill. Most people on those games are, are cool. It's just a few toxic people that give the game like GTA Online and give Call of Duty like a bad name. Humans at that age is just not really designed to kind of handle all the stimulus right. All that dopamine. So dopamine is basically like for people that are confused, dopamine, that's a chemical in your brain and that's released when you get, you know, excitement typically. And um, uh, this is what I said is if parents do not want their kids engaging with these toxic people online, they should not let them play these online games until at least they mature. It's, uh, like I said, this is all on the parents. This is all up to the parents. They're literally blamed. These, a lot of these kid games uh, are rated T and M. And my parents, to be fair, you know, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite. My parents did let me play, you know, T-rated games and M-rated games when I was um, a, a kid. But they let me play those games because they knew that I understood the difference between a video game and reality. And this all depends on the parents. This is all on the parents. This is not the fault of video game. You cannot blame a game like Grand Theft Auto for the characters cursing multiple times and saying that that's going to have a bad influence on kids when the game is designed for adults. It's designed towards an adult audience. That's the whole purpose. I'm not against, you know, I'm not against younger people playing these games that the parents want to let them play. What I'm saying is that these games are specifically designed for mature players. So these news articles, these news stations, clearly not doing their research with this stuff. The COVID-19 pandemic accelerated this notion as more children were isolated and in their homes than ever before. The length of the pandemic and restrictions were most apparent in kids. I had several patients that once they did become isolated, really that was their only motivating factor. Get done with school as quickly as possible or not schooling at all and just pretty much game all day if parents are working. It's pretty hard to police that, said Keller. My God, oh my God, this is, this, this psychiatrist is a moron. You know, it, it's, look, I'm not a psychiatrist, guys. But you don't have to be a genius to figure out that there's a correlation between the pandemic, lockdowns, and kids playing more video games. Do you know why kids are playing more video games, Mr. Psychiatrist, during the, during the pandemic? You know why? It's simple. And it wasn't just kids playing video, more video games during the pandemic. Do you know who else was playing more video games during the pandemic? Everyone. Every single person was. Every single person that plays video games typically was playing more video games during the pandemic and the lockdowns. And they were also typically watching more TV, watching more Netflix. Why? Why were people playing more video games during the pandemic? Why were people, you know, playing more video games 
and watching Netflix during the lockdowns. Why is that? Is it maybe because people could not go anywhere? Is it maybe because people could not meet up with their friends? Do you think about that? People were stuck at home. They weren't able to work. They weren't able to go to school. So what else did they have to do? People wanted to entertain themselves somehow, and video games are one of the most best forms of entertainment that you have right on your couch. That's it. So it's no wonder that kids were playing video games more during the lockdowns because they couldn't meet up with their friends and they couldn't do anything. At least on video games, when kids get online, they can connect into a party and play with their friends and talk to their friends in real life. Still, on that online game. So in fact, I think if you actually took away the video games from kids, I think that would actually make it worse during the lockdowns. Do you know why? Because then kids are not socializing at all. They're not able to talk to any friends. At least with the online games, they're able to talk with their friends. Like, do these, do these, do these stupid journalists and this psychiatrist, what do they expect kids to do during the lockdowns? What are they supposed to do? What exactly, are they just supposed to sit at home and just stare at the ceiling all day? Is that, is that what, or, or are they supposed to play basketball by themselves? Like, wh what do you, what do you expect kids to do when they're not able to meet up with their friends? I, I don't understand this. And look, I know there's a pandemic. I understand that. But I'm saying is that you you cannot blame kids for playing more video games during lockdowns. There, there's a reason for that. Dr. Keller recommended that parents and guardians should generally wait until middle school to expose kids to violent games or television shows and also to monitor screen time on video games. Well, why didn't you say, why didn't they post that at the very beginning of the article? You see, this is exactly what the media does. You know, this, this type of stuff, this is, this is clickbait. This is exactly what the, the media is doing stuff like this. They could have just posted this at the very beginning. Dr. Keller recommends, but no, it was all the way at the very bottom of the article. Do you guys notice that? And what I'll tell you guys no, um, here is that it said, they were saying that multiple studies, they're saying that multiple studies are somehow um, uh, correlating that, that kids are becoming more violent. Now, here's what, I'll, here's what I'll tell you about that. These studies, I've done a research paper about this in college. This was actually, this was actually my final research paper that I did, and that was whether violent video games actually um, contribute to real-world violence. And you know what the reality of that is? No. There is no correlation, and there is no evidence whatsoever that violent video games do actually contribute to, to real world violence. And these did, do you notice how this news media, they say multiple studies, multiple studies, but they don't even, they don't even link the studies here. They don't link their sources. They just say multiple studies. I'm telling you, if I was writing a research paper in college about the opposite, and I was writing that violent video games do cause um, real world violence, and I did not, and I said multiple studies, and I didn't link any of my studies, you know what kind of grade I'd get? I'd get a zero. So why is the media any different on this? And as for these studies, the vast majority of studies actually do show there is no correlation and there's no evidence between real world violence and violent video games. Yet governments around the world and the stupid media constantly think that, that there is some kind of correlation. And now I know some people will say, but, but professional, what about the few um, studies that actually do claim that there is correlation between violent video games and real world violence? Here's what I'll say about this. The studies that claim that there's real world violence linked to video games, they are more likely to be published by the media. This is a fact. If you look at the media stories in the world and you look at what the media is, how the media covers video games, they will choose to ignore the 90% of studies that cover that there's no correlation between video games and real world violence. And they'll pick and choose the 10% of studies that somehow show that there is um, a real world violence linked to video games. And those studies that show that violence is linked to video games, they're oftentimes very biased. They're very biased and there's something really stupid about them. Um, they, they could choose somebody that already has aggression problems and then have them play violent games and then somehow suggest that that person um, is aggressive. And look, I'll tell you this. If somebody, there have been incidents where people have, um, you know, committed crimes and then they later said, oh, you know, I committed the crime because of this video game. But do you know what I have to say about that? What I have to say, I also covered this in my research paper years ago. What I'll say about that is no rational person, no rational person is going to sit down and play a game like Grand Theft Auto and then go and commit crimes in the real world. No one is going to do that. No rational person is going to do that. If somebody plays a violent video game like Grand Theft Auto and then goes and commits re violence in real life, that person had problems before they even played the game. It's not the game's fault. That person already had issues before they even played the game. I don't know why this is so hard for the media to figure out. I have done, I, if you want to know, the, the majority of the video games that I've played on my channel, the vast majority of them, are crime games. I'm not just talking about Grand Theft Auto. I'm talking about Gr Grand Theft Auto, obviously, but Saints Row, The Godfather, Scarface, uh, Red Dead Redemption, well, Red Dead Redemption outlaw game, but still technically crime game. So there's just so many games that, I, that I've played 
so many games, and I plan to play even way more games that have crime in them, and the reason I played a lot of crime games is because a lot of you guys, my viewers, like the crime games, but also because I like them, and I typically like gangster games. Those are some of my favorite things, but you know what? You want to know something? Even though I play gangster games, and I like gangster games in general, I despise gangsters in real life. I hate criminals. I, I really don't like criminals. I would never consider committing any kind of crime. I played the Scarface game, where Scar uh, Tony Montana in the Scarface game is a drug lord, but I hate drugs. I despise drugs. I hate drug dealers. So this, this is just absolute nonsense. And do you know what I graduated in college? I graduated in college in law enforcement technology. Yes, I was going to become a police officer before I, even, um, before I even got bigger on YouTube. So this idea that people are going to play these games and then want to become cr criminals, it's just stupid. And then take a look at this, this quick article here. Leather, violent video games are contributing to increases in violent crime. My God, this is stupid. What does this have to say? It has many times been sur surmised that there is a connection between crime and, and, and violent video games. Perhaps the recent surge of increasingly violent video games, which were played far more often due to stay-at-home orders and the lockdown, and the massive surge in violent crime have a more than coincidental relationship. No, they don't. No, they don't. What, what, what are you talking about? That's violent video games have a link to the violent crime that has been rising. Do you want to know, do you want to know what things contribute to the rise in crime, guys? You know what actually contributes to rise in crime? I will tell you. The number one factor that probably contributes to rise in crime is poverty. Poverty and lack of opportunity. When people are poor, they have, they don't have as much opportunity. They don't have as much opportunity as people who have more money than them. And so people are trying to find ways to make money, and some unfortunately turn to crime. If you help people get out of poverty, that is one way to actually help fight um, crime. Because if you notice, when the economy does well, when the economy does well, people are generally making money, crime goes down. When the economy goes bad, inflation goes up, crime goes up. That is not a coincidence. It's because people are losing money, and some people are very poor, and they, like I said, they don't have opportunity, and they turn to, cr to crime to make that money. It's, it isn't because of video games. Do you honestly believe that the surge in, in violent crime is because of video games? Seriously? This, this media is just stupid. No, it's because of the economy, and it's because, you know, people do not have as much opportunity. Other factors, other factors, obviously, so not just the economy, but there's also policing. It's how areas are policed, obviously, you know. There's the broken windows theory in law enforcement, and basically what the broken windows theory is, to explain it really short, the broken windows theory basically suggests that if there are small crimes in an area, small crimes, and the police actually do not, uh, do not fix those crimes, they don't solve those crimes really quickly, those smaller crimes turn into a little bit bigger crimes. And then if those aren't solved, those little bit bigger crimes turn into average crimes. If the average size crimes don't get solved, they eventually get into big scale crimes. And what I mean by that is take a look at this as an example. A neighborhood has graffiti, graffiti all over the place. And what happens is the police don't bother investigating who's doing all the graffiti. So do you know what ends up happening because of that? The criminals see that, they see the police are not enforcing the law. Graffiti starts increasing around the area. Then after graffiti starts increasing, people resort to vandalism. Windows start getting smashed. Police don't do anything about that. Then the criminals see police aren't going to do anything when there's vandalism. Then that, when you know what that leads to? That leads to burglaries. Burglaries, then people breaking into homes. Police don't do anything about that. Do you know what eventually then happens? Then drug dealers come into the neighborhood and they start selling drugs. They see the police are not patrolling this area. They're not enforcing the law here. The drug dealers then start selling drugs to people. People get addicted to drugs. And then the people that get addicted to drugs are more likely to cause crime because they need to pay for their habits. So they resort to burglaries and robberies and that will also increase. And then eventually, do you know what eventually happens? Eventually gangs then come into the area and then gangs start fighting each other over trying to sell drugs in that same neighborhood. And that's how a good neighborhood actually goes bad. It's, that's what the broken windows theory is. It's basically that when, cr when crime starts, it needs to be solved right away. It needs to be dealt with right away because if you don't deal with it right away, it eventually starts getting bigger and bigger and criminals see that and they take advantage of that. Other reasons that crime goes up is also because you have stupid district attorneys. You have stupid prosecutors that make dumb laws and do not enforce the laws that are currently on the books. That's the reason. This is from, my, from a law enforcement perspective. I was never a cop, but I graduated in law enforcement. This is just from my perspective from, from studying law enforcement, why violent crime goes up. It's not because it's the economy. It's lack of policing in certain areas and you have stupid district attorneys.
It's stupid district attorneys that don't know what they're doing. That's the reason. It's not because of violent video games. That's just stupid. Violent video games are not even 1% of the reason that violent crime goes up. While video games cannot shoulder all the blame for this, they certainly are a large contributor. My god, what an idiot writing this. Studies have shown that people playing violent games often start to reflect the character they play and become increasingly immersed in a world that they sometimes seem very real to them. What? What the hell is the Las Vegas Review Journal talking about here? What? You know, I, 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 you know, I... This is so stupid. This is so dumb. Like, like I literally, I, I have two characters on GTA Online. One of them is like, you know, I have a billion dollars on that character and I have like all these, you know, all these businesses. And like, what am I, am I going to start stealing like high export cars and selling them because my GTA Online character did this? Or am I going to, like on my second character who's a biker, am I going to turn into some like big scary biker and start like dealing drugs because of GTA Online? Seriously? How, how stupid are they? I, I, I play as criminals all the time in video games, but I never would want to be a criminal. I, I despise criminals, like I said. This is, <laughs> this is just stupid. This is just laughable. Kids are going to want to... And like, and what, if a kid plays Fortnite, are they going to want to do Battle Royale in real life or something like this? You know, it, we're, we're laughing at this, but this is just how stupid the media is. The media is dumb. And the reason the media publishes stories like this, guys, the reason the whole media does stuff like this is because, like I said, it's clickbait. It attracts views. And it's also because older people, typically like, you know, the parents of these kids, they don't understand the video games, the parents and the grandparents, they don't understand the video games as much as the current generation does. And so what happens is they try to tr try to create a scapegoat for current problems, and so they blame it all on the video games. They say, oh, you know, these video games that you're purchasing for your kids are going to turn them into gangsters. And then the parents are like, what? Wait, what? And they start listening to the media, they start buying the newspapers, watching this, and this also gets politicians involved. Then politicians, you know, try they try to blame um, current, current problems. Instead of trying to actually fix those problems, they try to blame it on something easy like video games. They say, oh, video games are the reason for violent crime and then they'll try to you know restrict video games or make some stupid laws regarding video games i don't talk politics on this channel but only i cover it when you know like dumb politicians that try to get involved in stuff like that apart from creating social problems violent video games act like virtual reality training what what, what are they talking about virtual reality training so what kid people who play gt online are going to want to fly oppressor mark twos in real life you know what desensitizing impressionable people to blood no gore and violence and killing no i am not not some video game hater i happen to enjoy playing now and then but this is a big problem nowadays it needs to be addressed no you are a video game hater you know what what do you play you know what does this what does this person honestly play this person is not an actual gamer no 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 danny ringo the elko the person that wrote this article you are not a gamer i don't know what you are talking about my god two stupid news articles and like i i you, Literally, just, I, I don't know what's going through these people's minds when they post this stuff. It's just absolute nonsense. But let me know what you guys think down below of this. Um, you know, sorry for the 20-minute rant here. But, you know, I'm going to be doing more of these crazy current events videos. I got some lore videos coming up for you guys also that are awesome. But, you know, I, I just I saw these articles the other day, and I just had to make a video on this because this is so stupid. But thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.